Did you recently purchase an Instant Pot? Or maybe you received one as a gift. Are you overwhelmed by all of the buttons, the functions, the gadgets, and just need a little help getting started? Hey there, I'm London Brazil from EvolvingTable.com where you'll learn how to make nourishing meals for your loved ones. And today we're actually learning how to use an Instant Pot to make all of your favorite healthy recipes in a fraction of the time. About two years ago, I received my very first Instant Pot. To be honest, I was completely overwhelmed and confused by all of the buttons and functions that were on this thing. So much so that I had my husband actually do the first trial run in the Instant Pot. After he successfully used the Instant Pot, I figured that I might as well give it a go. There were a few basic concepts that I didn't quite understand about pressure cooking in the beginning. I'll make sure to cover all of those in detail as well as a few extra tips so that even if you're an Instant Pot newbie, you will have huge success. So if you're ready to start using your Instant Pot, come on in and let's get started. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use my favorite model of the Instant Pot. It's called the Instant Pot 60 Duo Plus 9-in-1 Pressure Cooker. So what do all those numbers actually mean? The 60 stands for a 6-quart Instant Pot. If you have a family of four or five people, six quarts should be plenty for you. However, if you have five, six people, maybe more in your family, or you like to make big batches of soup at one time, you might want to opt for the eight quart model instead. The phrase nine in one stands for how many functions this Instant Pot has. I wouldn't splurge too much on getting tons of different functions because as you'll see at the end of this video, there's only a couple of functions you'll probably end up using on a regular basis. Let's take a look at all of the items that come inside your Instant Pot Duo Plus box. The first thing you should find is a user manual. This is a great resource for any additional Instant Pot questions you may have. A trivet. This can be used to steam vegetables or hold delicate ingredients like eggs. A rice paddle, a soup spoon, and a plastic measuring cup. A condensation collector. This is used to catch excess liquid so it doesn't land on your countertop. And a power cord. Before we start assembling the Instant Pot, make sure that you've thoroughly rinsed the stainless steel pot, the lid, and any accessories with warm water and soap. Place the pot into your pressure cooker, making sure to remove any warning labels. On the back side of the Instant Pot, place the condensation collector using the guides on the cooker. Press in until you feel it snap. Now let's take a look at this fancy lid. You will want to make sure the steam release handle is in its correct position. You may initially think that this handle is pretty wobbly. But don't worry, that's how it's supposed to be. You should easily be able to guide the handle into the ceiling and then back into the venting position. Flip the lid over and take a look on the inside. There are two very important features on the interior of the lid. The first is called the anti-block shield and is a critical safety feature of pressure cookers. To remove the shield for cleaning, press with your finger or thumb towards the outside of the lid and lift until it releases. To put it back on, place the anti-block shield and press until it snaps into place. The second important feature of the lid is a silicone ring. This ring is what helps to seal the lid completely to the pot so adequate pressure can build up. This is the most common mistake I've run into when it comes to the Instant Pot not fully sealing. Over time, this inner silicone ring tends to stretch out and not fit the lid properly. The best fix for this is to find a few extra of these silicone rings. I'll make sure to drop you a link in the description below to the ones that I use. The silicone ring should have come already attached. If it didn't, or if you would like to put it back on after cleaning. All you need to do is stretch it along the metal ring until it fits snugly around the circumference of the lid. The last thing you will need to do to finish setting up your Instant Pot is to plug in the power cord towards the back and bottom of the Instant Pot. Plug your Instant Pot into an outlet where you will be cooking the entire time since it is unsafe to move a pressure cooker while cooking. Our Instant Pot is assembled, so now it's time to move on to the basics of pressure cooking 
as well as an overview of the control panel. The first thing to note is the max fill line that's located on the inside of the stainless steel pot. You do not want to go over this line since an unsafe amount of pressure can potentially build up. The only exception to this rule I would make is for a whole chicken. When you're cooking that, sometimes a little piece of it will go over the max fill line. You should be totally okay in this case and can still cook your chicken. I'll fill the Instant Pot with about two cups of water today just to test it out. And as a quick rule of thumb, never have less than one cup of liquid in the Instant Pot to prevent burning. Place the lid on top of the Instant Pot and follow the arrows on the lid to close it in a clockwise direction. To open the lid, simply turn it in a counterclockwise direction. Now here comes probably the most important step turning that pressure release handle to sealed. When you turn the pressure release handle to sealed, you will feel it hit a stopping point. And while we're here, let's go ahead and take a look at what's called the float valve. This metal piece is depressed right now. Once the Instant Pot comes to pressure, it will raise up and become flush with the lid. Now that our Instant Pot is totally sealed, it's time to take a look at that control panel full of all the buttons to be honest, there's probably about five or six that you will end up using on a regular basis. The first button is the saute function. When using this function, you will wanna make sure the lid is off so you can stir around your ingredients. I use this all of the time when sauteing onions or garlic before pressure cooking. Adjust the heat level while sauteing by pressing the button. You will see the words less, normal, and more become highlighted as you toggle through the options. Another button that's technically not pressure cooking is the slow cook function. Yes, you can actually get rid of that big bulky slow cooker and make some room in your cabinet because the Instant Pot slow cooks too. To slow cook, press the button until your preferred temperature is reached. Once again, looking at the less, normal, and more on the LCD display. You can either use the Instant Pot lid when slow cooking. Just make sure to put the pressure release valve in the venting position. A glass lid may also be used when slow cooking so you can see the contents of your Instant Pot. The last button is the one I use the most often and probably the one you've been waiting for, the pressure cook function. This is the manual method of setting your pressure cooker's time and pressure level. All of the other buttons you see on the Instant Pot are preset times that it should take for soups, meats, beans, etc. Really, you can just ignore all of those other buttons if it's making you confused. And just pay attention to that one little button in the lower right hand corner. So let's press that magic button and see what happens. What I want you to first look at are the large numbers in the middle. This is the amount of time you are setting for your Instant Pot to cook and will be specified in the recipe you are following. Change the timer by pressing the plus and minus buttons. You will see the word pressure and then low or high. High pressure is common for most recipes, but you can easily switch between the two. Are you ready to give it a go? I'm gonna set my timer for two minutes since I'm not really cooking anything today. It will take about 10 seconds for the display to switch to on after setting the timer. And then about another five to 10 minutes for the Instant Pot to come to pressure. The more ingredients that you have in your Instant Pot, the longer it will take for it to fully pressurize. And remember that float valve we talked about earlier? Watch what happens when the Instant Pot comes to pressure. The float valve will start to do a happy dance as it gets close to sealing. Once the float valve is flush with the lid, the Instant Pot is sealed and the timer starts counting down. You will hear a beep when the timer is done. At this stage, the Instant Pot starts counting up for how many minutes past the timer the Instant Pot has stayed warm. At this point, you can release the pressure in three different ways. The first method is called a quick pressure release and simply means that you open up the pressure release handle as soon as the timer goes off. The second method is called a natural pressure release. For this, you will let your content sit in the Instant Pot until the float valve naturally goes down. This does take a little bit longer, but you will end up with super tender food. The third method is called a 10 minute natural pressure release. This method falls somewhere in between the two and consists of you waiting for 10 minutes 
past the initial timer to release the pressure. Today I've done a 10 minute natural pressure release and it's time to release the pressure handle. If you happen to be lucky enough and you're by a door or a window, open it up so you can let all of the excess steam go outside of the house. However, if you're like me and your Instant Pot is in your kitchen, simply grab a dish towel, toss it over the top of your Instant Pot, covering that pressure release handle so it will catch all of the steam. Lift the handle with a wooden spoon or carefully with your finger and turn the handle into the venting position. You'll know all of the pressure is released and it is safe to open the Instant Pot when the float valve goes back down. Yay, you know how to use your Instant Pot now. If you have any additional questions that weren't covered in this video, please ask away below. And if you want a few easy Instant Pot recipes to start with, you can find some here as well as my favorite Instant Pot Chicken Vegetable Soup right here. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss another nourishing meal to serve your loved ones. Thanks so much for hanging out. I'll see you again soon.